What you're looking at right now is what will hopefully be on every Kickstart dirt bike within the next two years. This kit that I've been developing completely eliminates the need to ever kick your bike again. And not only does this solve a big problem in the community, it's been a huge learning experience for me. And because of how much I actually enjoyed working through this process, it's actually led me to go to college for mechanical engineering. That's not to say we didn't have any explosions and epic failures along the way, but overall, I just love everything about this process. It probably has been and still will continue to be one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. But I really am getting ahead of myself. So let's go back to when this all first started. So usually I make dirt bike lights, but recently I had another idea. What if I could make any bike e-started? And this is pretty much officially where it all started. Just an idea to solve the most annoying problem that I would face. With this really signifying the start of it all, I figured the best way to get rolling was to set myself some constraints. And to be honest, the constraints were pretty simple. Whatever I made to solve this problem had to be universal. It had to be reliable, simple, and cheap. If I could do all these things, I would be in business. And with that out of the way, my brain got to work. The first thing I did was actually create a little model. And the first ever mechanism I decided on was inspired by a four bar linkage. Except it was like super messy and had a slider in the middle. But at the time, this was looking really promising to me. At this point, I even made like a mini one for the pit bike that I was working on at the time. And with a little more thought, I was able to refine it into the best answer I could. Could. This was a lot simpler and took after a more normal 4-bar linkage design. One of the key reasons why I used something like this in the first place is because electric motors are more efficient when they can continuously spin, but the kickstart mechanism only allows the kickstarter to go about 150 degrees before it has to go back to zero. So what this 4-bar linkage was able to do is convert a consistent rotating force into a consistently reciprocating force, which was just what I needed. And with this cardboard model out of the way, it gave me enough confidence to start working on the first prototype. But first things first, I needed a motor. So I hit up Amazon and got this one in the mail and it was straight back to cardboard. I found cardboard to just be the easiest way to do a quick prototype and really understand the dimensions I need. After I got all the dimensions I would need from cardboard, I'd print up a design that I would make in CAD along with a few other parts I might need. Like for instance, the motor arm. But once I got all my parts made, I was pretty much ready to give it a shot. But it's definitely good to know that even to get to this point, it took a ton of iterations. And that was mostly because I was still very new to all this and I didn't really even know what I was doing. I would make my motor mount and then my motor arm would hit it, which isn't really the effect I'm going for. But once I would get everything straightened out, it was time for the first test. Looking back at it, this is actually pretty pathetic to watch, but this was a very important time. This showed me that my idea could actually be real. With me considering this design an amazing success, I jumped into my first fully 3D printed prototype. And during this time, a lot of things changed. For one, I actually started doing a little bit of numbers and I found out that my motor needed to change. So I went to Harbor Freight and I looked for the best drill they had and I picked it up for like a hundred bucks. Brought it home and I immediately destroyed it and that became the heart of this design. And with that, I had to figure out how I was gonna mount this thing and how I was gonna make something that fit where the old chuck used to be. Since I'm a nice guy though, and this is YouTube, I'll just show you how it actually turned out. So the first thing I did was model the threads in CAD. Then I threw these threads inside of a cylinder and it was pretty much done. Then for mounting, I used the original holes that are on the drill and I modeled up some brackets that just fit right on. After those were all done printing, it was on to some assembly. And with assembly done, this is how it turned out. This is not something I'm particularly proud about now, but back then this was great. And with this done, I had to go see how it fit on my bike. When I did the first test fit, I felt like I was missing something. And then I realized I just had to go underneath my radiator hose. With this on the bike, all I needed to do was make my linkage arm. So I started with this sketchy plastic cardboard thing and I ditched it and I just went for straight plastic. Mix those two together and here's what I got. Once again, a very underwhelming looking clip, but this was just a huge step forward for me. After this, and after a few more iterations, I came up with my first 3D printed linkage arms. And as I was about to find out, this was the start of all of the problems. I'm gonna start it off slow. Oh wow, it's bending a lot up there. Oh wow. Okay, it's starting to move my radiator. 
it's not good. And once it actually started to move my radiator is when I finally called it quits. The best part about failing though is now you have a place to learn from. And what I learned is that I need to make my parts a lot stronger. So I changed a few geometries and I also just really beefed everything up. And with that, you can probably guess what I did next. So this is test number two with the updated top mount, fully reinforced. I'm gonna kind of give it a little boost to see if it'll actually go. It is zero degrees outside, so not ideal temperature for 3D printing stuff, but okay. I'm gonna let it transfer load onto there. Okay, it has load on it. Now you can see it's already starting to bend again. So what if I hold it and help push? That oh, is the go. motor arm completely stripping out. To be fair, I should have expected this. I'll save you the yapping and hard work, but I basically made a new one out of metal. And once again, we were back to another test. We're out here for the people. Let's see what happens here. Okay, look, it's moving it. Oh, wow. The top motor mount's gonna break again. Oh. Oh my God. And this is the first time that I've ever been so shocked by something, I was literally speechless. It just blew up right in front of me. But now I knew exactly what I had to fix. So another short while later, I had a metal arm made up. And to cut to the point, uh, this destroyed a lot of my plastic parts. After seeing this, my first instinct was, I need to get this all made out of metal. But then I had a very big perspective change. I looked back at my numbers once again, and I found out that this still wouldn't work. There's just too much torque, and you just can't do it with this size motor. But then I had this pretty crazy idea. If I could just find a way to get a little reduction out of my motor, it would probably work. So I thought back to something really random, pulleys. Pulleys are a pretty crazy concept when you actually dig into them, and there's tons of good videos on them, so I won't do too much explaining, but this was the compact gear reduction I was looking for. So I started doing some thinking. And this was the first concept. Now a lot has changed, so let me go over a few things about this. I designed it as a disc because when you introduce a pulley into a system, to get the same amount of travel, you have to go twice as far. So if I needed my kickstart to move four inches, now I had to pull it eight. But those eight inches would be twice as easy to do. So the idea is I can wrap it around this disc, get the full travel that I need to, and then once it reaches a certain point, because of the ramp, it's a mechanically timed system and it will be able to jump off and reset back to zero again. Ready for the next kick. This seems simple enough. So I did some light testing and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get this all out of metal so it won't break. And once all that got here, it was time for some more assembly. And just like that, we were ready for another test with a completely new idea. But before I could even throw it on, that same day, the rest of the parts came in. So I got those fitted on and we were ready to go. Out in the garage, I felt strangely optimistic about this one. Something about all being metal and that I actually did some math for this. I was pretty excited to see how this worked. Now I am glazing over a few parts here, so I'm going to mention them super fast. To make it so I could actually use the kickstart shaft, I made a little part that sits over top of the kickstart knuckle that basically acts like my own kickstart arm. And then I just put a little pulley on the end so that's where my pulley was sitting and then for the anchor point i just anchored this to the frame for now but after i had those things figured out too i was pretty much ready to give it a test oh my god that hurt this was the first time i ever rolled the motor over using one of my mechanisms <laughs> this was truly an amazing moment there was one thing though that i couldn't quite get off my mind i thought back to my constraints that i set reliable simple stuff like that and when i actually took a second and looked at this project so far i did not see reliable or simple anywhere near it realizations like this are always really hard because no one wants to throw away the thing they've been working on for like a month straight but i knew that if like mud was introduced to this or you fell on it it was really sensitive to that and i knew i could do better than this so i took a different approach i reached out to my followers on instagram and i asked them if they wouldn't mind replacing their kickstart shaft in order to get e-start and to my surprise no one seemed to care this was insane to me i thought this would be a deal breaker for people but i guess not this ended up opening a huge door for me so the first thing i did is i went to get a better look at my kickstart oh, shaft wow. now if you're like me and you didn't really even have an idea of how these kickstarts actually worked here's a quick rundown so from the factory, when this is in the bike, this is facing out, right? You have a like a spring, one piece threads through here, and one piece is like stuck on the, on the case. And that spring always wants to turn the shaft that way. So it's constantly being pressured that, that direction. 
Now this piece on the inside of the case, there's like a little ramp and lip that lifts it off. So when this, when this is always pushing that way, this is lifted off when it's standing still, letting it just free spin. But then when you turn this, there's a spring here. And when this thing comes off that ramp and goes down the ramp, the spring presses it into there. And now this is, this is like, you can spin it now. So when you go to kick and it's up here, you know how sometimes you have to like push a little bit before it actually engages. That's what makes it basically go off the ramp and then it'll go and then you can kick. And then when it's, when it goes back up again, the, that spring wants to turn everything up. So it just goes and then you're back up at the top again. Now that we're all kind of on the same page, I knew that I had to find a way to replicate how this is done, except make it spin 360 degrees. If I could do that, everything would be so much simpler. So here is what I came up with. This allows the gear to be driven in one direction and free spin in the other. This works similarly to a Bendix. When the starter motor is on, it drives it. And as soon as the starter motor is off or the motor takes over, it releases. Next up was my motor. And this motor is meant for an 800cc quad. So it should have more than enough juice. And now I just had to connect both of these. I decided on going for a shaft drive system. And at the end of that shaft was a 30 to one gear reduction using a worm gear and a worm wheel. This is probably the most compact setup I can get. Using a 3D scan of my bike and some parts that I picked out, I got all my parts printed out. I threw in most of the bearings I needed and I was able to get a dry fit. And what this dry fit showed is that I still need to do some tweaks to my designs. Like. So I made my shaft longer. I shrunk the case sizes a little bit and I was actually ready to print them for the end of this video when my printer essentially had like a meltdown, rendering it pretty much useless for a few days. So for now, I'm pretty much just waiting on the parts for my printer to come. And I'm also continuing to refine the actual like design of it all. Really quick though, something that is really important to note is that even though you set constraints for a project, always be willing for them to change. Uh, that's what I found out is that you might think a certain way and think you know the answers, but when it actually comes to it, things are different, things change. So. I had to learn how to change my constraints and that was one of the biggest benefits I had to this project. Um, it's still gonna, I'm still going to make it as universal as I can, I'm still going to make it as reliable and as simple as possible, least amount of failure points, but now that I can go in the bike, this is going to be way better. I can't wait. Coming up soon though, something to look forward to is I'm going to try to get the first working prototype using only 3D printed parts. Um, that'd be really awesome. My 3D printer's out of commission like I said, but I'm working on getting it fixed and getting some more high quality uh, filaments uh, because if I can do this and prove that it works, then I can get to my Kickstarter. And once I'm at my Kickstarter, I can actually get this out of metal and I can do some real testing. So that's kind of where I'm at with that. But this is the closest I've ever been to the end of this project. So I just figured I had to make a video on all the progress up till now. Just some housekeeping. If you like this video and you want to support me, you can like and subscribe. Uh, other than that, I do have a Patreon. Uh, that's actually where I'll be handing out the first tester units. So if you want to be a tester for me or try this out before it hits the market, that's the place to be. Um, yeah, thank you guys for, so much for watching. Uh, I can't wait for the next video.